Hello everyone, good afternoon or good evening. Um, hopefully you can all hear and see me okay. Um, if you can't for whatever reason, please do refresh the browser. Um, there might be some technical issues, but hopefully you can all hear me and see me. Um, thank you for joining this Your Overseas Home webinar. Um, my name's Seb and I'm one of the account managers over here at Your Overseas Home. It's great to have you all with us, um, whether you are watching live uh, or you are catching up on demand. Today we're chatting with Helen, um, who is a sales manager over at Cypress Emeralds. Um, we've been working with Helen and her team for a number of years now, and she has been great and invaluable to our clients, um, helping many of them in similar positions as yourselves, buy property overseas, but also uh, to, to rent those properties overseas. Um, the topic of this webinar is all around buying and investing in property in Cyprus and uh, the rental side of things. Um, so throughout the whole session, we do invite you to ask your questions uh, throughout uh, as we go along. In the bottom right hand side of your screen, there's a chat function or questions uh, function. If you click on there, type in your questions, Helen and myself will then get around to answering hopefully as many of them as we can today. If we don't get around to answering your questions, fear not, um, we will be passing over your details to Helen and the team at Cypress Emerald. And we also will post Helen's contact details at the end of the session so you can contact one another uh, and obviously go through your, your requirements in a bit more detail. Um, before we get started, um, Helen, thanks for, for joining us. Thanks for being here. Would you mind just, um, just having a, a brief introduction to yourself uh, and share with our viewers you know, what Cyprus Emerald actually does and how you, how you can help them? Mm -hmm. Okay, hello. So thank you, Seth, for the wonderful introduction. Um, Helen from Cyprus Emerald. Cyprus Emerald is a real estate agency um, with a very good team of qualified professionals with more than 20 years of experience in real estate agency. Uh, we are here to help you select the right property for you. Uh, and also we, we stay with you throughout the process. We have an after sales department that's going to make sure that all the sales process is going to go smoothly and it's going to end in transferring the property to you. And then we have a customer service department uh, that is going to help you with a nice, uh, you know, choosing your choose your furniture, bring your things over from with help you with everything. We also have um, because we will talk about rentals, property rentals, so people that they are, you know, looking for investments. Uh, we have an independent, we cooperate with an independent property investment advisor uh, that is helping our clients uh, do, the, do the best with their, uh, you know, money that they want to invest in properties in Cyprus. That's more or less about us. Okay, thanks, Helen. Um, obviously, as I mentioned, uh, I know exactly uh, how much you've been helping our clients. I know uh, it's great to, to get a bit more perspective for everyone listening in about exactly you know how that you could potentially you know, be helping them with their journeys. Um, we so we have we have some questions um, around Cyprus and in a bit more detail exactly uh, focusing on Cyprus general. But the, the first question that I um, have Helen is, is I suppose Cyprus itself. I've um, been well, lucky enough to be in once when I was younger on holiday with my family, um, and I loved it. But I mean, I suppose for the audience, why is um, why is Cyprus uh, such a good choice for a property investment at the moment? It's like Cyprus um, has a very has a very attractive system tax system for for the real for the real estate property investments. We have no property taxes. Council taxes are really low. Cost of living is lower than in most of the countries. Um, also, we for how many years now? For the last 10 years, you can say we have a very, very good and healthy economic growth as country. And politically, we, we're, we're stable. We have a political stability. Uh, we are a democratic country. 
an EU country, and also recently, actually, which is very important for us as well, we have accomplished, we have fulfilled the last requirement to actually join the Schengen zone, and we're waiting now on an approval. So there is many, many good things going on, and uh, property values they go higher, and also the rental yield is it goes higher. And you can find all this information on the internet and also on RICs, you know, that they, they issue the quarterly updates. You can see everything there so they can confirm what, what I'm saying. Sure. Oh, yeah, great, Helen. Um, you yeah, said uh, not to mention the weather as well. I'm looking out here. In, uh, uh, <laughs> of in course. London, it's just started raining. So um, I'm sure some of the viewers here are probably experiencing similar weather. Um, <laughs> I thought I'd just highlight that as well. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, you know, as, as you say, it's a really good time to be investing in Cyprus. Um, we say so we've been uh, tracking it from our, our, from our side as well um you know rental yield property price increases uh are looking pretty strong and it's forecasted to continue um so thanks for obviously giving us a bit more insight from from your side um the, the next question is around i suppose the rental um side of things um would it be possible for a uk resident i know since brexit there's been quite a lot of change but would it be possible for a uk resident without an eu passport um would it be possible for them to rent out their property in Cyprus? Yes, yes, it would be possible. Uh, the legislation, it's, it's, it's a lot of years, it's quite a few years that it has changed that. And unfortunately, if you go, if you Google that question, you still find the old information as a new information. And that's why I understand we have, and, and also we have lots of questions like that from, from our clients. Uh, there is no problem whatsoever from any UK resident, uh, that non-EU person, to buy a property in Cyprus and put it for rentals. And it can be short term or it can be long term. You do not have to be EU. You do not have to have a residency in Cyprus in order to do that. You can be a resident. You can be a non-resident EU third country. You can still buy a property and put it for any type of uh, rental you wish. Okay, brilliant. No, that's that's very clear. Um, I know, say here at Europe Sea's home, we're still getting uh, receiving a lot of inquiries or questions or queries. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. around Brexit and, you know, the implications it's had. And it's great to, to understand that, uh, you know, UK buyers, if they were to invest in, in Cyprus, um, mm -hmm. they, they, you know, they still be able to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that, thanks for the answers on that one. Um, in regards to, I suppose, the um, the financial side of things, I know you mentioned, um, you know, you can get great value properties. There's also um, the cost of living is, is, is somewhat cheaper over in, in mm -hmm. Cyprus. But in regards to the, the VAT, um, what are the VAT rules related to um, property investments in Cyprus for, for non-residents? Is there any difference at all? No, um, there is not a difference. Either you can be a Cypriot, you can be a Greek or a UK person. The rules are the same. Now, for older properties, resale properties, there's no VAT. Uh, for the new built or, or off-plan, plot and built properties, that there is a VAT. If you want to use that property to rent it out, the VAT that you pay, it has to be the full VAT, which is 19%, one nine. I have to say something really important though at that moment. Many people might think of 19, it's a lot. Yes, however, when you rent out your property, you take back that VAT. You don't take it back event immediately, but when you rent it, because um, on the rent that you're, um, you know, receiving, you pay VAT to the government, you have you have returns or that. So eventually that VAT comes back when, let's say, if you buy a property to reside yourself and you use it as a personal, you're not going to rent. The VAT is 5%. You never get that back. The 19%, you will get it back eventually. Okay. All right. Brilliant. So yeah, it's, um, so it really is truly an, uh, an investment <laughs> with, with that. And, uh, so it's good to get an understanding about, you know, the longevity of and returns from, from VAT rules, um, in Cyprus, you know, I, I wasn't aware of that. So thanks a lot, Helen. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
Yeah. What other um, what other taxes, uh, if any, uh, should the the viewers be perhaps aware of if they were looking to invest in Cyprus? Mm -hmm. Okay, as a property owner, you pay. As I said, you pay. There's no property tax nothing uh, then you have the council taxes that they can be from 150 euros to 600 euros per year per year that depends on the type of property the size and the municipality uh, now and there's also something like sewage tax and stuff like that around 0 0.5 or 3 percent maximum for very very big and luxurious properties per year so you understand they're quite low now when you're renting your property okay there are some other tax there are some other taxes um the income that you are receiving from renting a property in cyprus is taxed in cyprus right because cyprus has agreements tax agreements uh with the uk and other countries of course but we're more focused in the uk market now um you're not going to be taxed double okay so you pay your tax here and then i mean it depends on your income in england in the uk if you have something else you get paid tax there the difference that's okay now taxes here in cyprus they're quite low until nineteen thousand five hundred per year you're it's tax-free the income and then from that point you have you pay 20 percent 30 percent with maximum 35 percent for any annual income that it's 60,000 plus so you can understand there's not a lot the taxes now uh, from the rent that you will collect uh, you need to pay if you are if you are a, a resident a permanent resident of cyprus you pay two taxes that they're very small the defense tax and the health tax it's called the SE tax if you're non-resident you pay only the health tax we're talking about the defense tax a third three percent on the 75 percent of the of the rent not the whole thing and the health tax is 2.65 now um and and that's all and because you have a lot of deductions as well let's say now you're renting your property out and you have it in a in a property management company you pay that property management company that fee comes out of your income so it's deducted also any maintenance you will be doing because yearly you do maintenance at your job at your property so these maintenance costs they are they are deductible so at the end the 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 income from that property that you will be receiving is going to be that much minus this minus this minus this and it's that so it's a really good system it's a fair system and it's a good system and it's quite profitable okay right now that's very comprehensive um and say uh there's a lot of different components there that it you know, if I, if I was looking to do it, I would love to, to be working with you because it, it does feel like there's, there's a lot to think about when buying a property or yeah. buying an investment property here mm. in the UK, let alone, you know, overseas in Cyprus. Um, so, yeah, let's say the, the, the knowledge that you're, you're helping out with is, is very, very useful for everyone. So thank you. Um, so basically looking at the, the processes um, or the journey of, of buying property um, in Cyprus, if I was perhaps you know thinking about investing my my um, my, my money in, in Cyprus in a property, and I wanted to start working with, with Cyprus Emerald, how does it kind of work? Do I um, contact you very early in my in my search, or do I have a look first um, and and find a property? Sort of how how would it how would I go about it all? Um, it's good to do it a little bit early than when you're ready. Let's say we have some people that. Actually, this morning when, when I came into this office, it was like a lovely couple, UK couple. They come 18 years in Cyprus and they want now to buy and, you know, retire here. Uh, they will do that in two years time. Uh, the gentleman was 58 years old and at 60, he would take his pension. Now, he came, he asked questions about residency, about, you know, all these things. And next year, when he, was, when he will come, so it's going to be one year 
before he's ready to buy he's gonna come here we're gonna we're gonna do an aerial tour we're gonna you know he's gonna because some people they know just the sea when you know the coastal areas we're gonna make an area tour we're gonna see some uh, type of properties that they might be good for him he's gonna check the prices so he's gonna have an idea and then when he's ready of course any properties he's gonna see a year before you know maybe they're not available but he will know which area in which area he, he would choose so he's not going to be he knows he's looking at this or that area for that or that type of property more or less on that budget so when he's ready half of the job is done so it's better like this we would say and it's the same for of course the you know the rental properties all that we we, we would advise something like this okay yeah i mean um i that, that completely aligns to um what, what the team here at your, your overseas home, you know, recommends, um, you know, if you're looking to, to purchase a property, the more time you have, the better, really. Um, just to kind of highlight as well, the, the, you know, the questions that you've already answered, Helen, are obviously very important for clients to know before mm -hmm. perhaps uh, finding the, their dream property and then realizing, you know, oh, there's tax involved and there's all yeah. these other potential financial considerations. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you say the more time you have, the better. Um, you say get everything lined up the properties may not be there but at least you're in a good position to know the process and you know, exactly. the implications and things like that um so that's great i mean in regards to um once you do find uh let's say a rental investment property mm -hmm. um would there be any sort of other services or um uh, uh so those contacts that i should be in, aware of and be speaking to like lawyers or um accountants mm -hmm. is there anyone else involved in the process yeah it's like if you buy a property and you put it to for for rent either it's going to be long term or short term that depends on on the property okay on the location the type of property and stuff we we would recommend our professional opinion is for a lawyer to make the rental contract if it's a long term thing because it's going to be the right contract now if you're buying a property, you have a lawyer already. So he's going to do that. You know, you buy the property, he's doing the process, and then he's putting the rental contract in as well. Um, and then an accountant to take care of all these taxes. I mean, it's not, it's not going to be a great expense. And you know you're doing everything right. You you put everything through the tax offices, all the taxes are paid and everything is, is good. Now, we would also recommend a property management company. A property management company is going to make sure that um, if it's for long term, they find the right tenant, they screen the tenant, they they make they inspect the um, the property they make sure everything is running smoothly if something goes wrong they're the point of contact and not the owner who's not going to even be here in the country but even if he is uh it's going to be better for the uh, professionals to to deal with all that um and um and they make sure that the rent is collected and everything for short term holiday rents we uh, we believe it's absolutely necessary to have a professional to deal with that. It's very complicated. It's not easy. Their job is to maximize their profit. So they do the best on the for the rental platforms, holiday platforms to have, you know, your property all the time full, um, make the best services. So you have the best ratings in the platforms. Um, so we would apart from a lawyer and an accountant, we would say a property management company, it's it's absolutely necessary. Yeah, yeah, thanks. I think uh, if I was to, to buy, buy property and I was renting out and I was even in the country, it, it's so important to have that, um, that contact there on the ground, but also you've got people yes. coming and going on a fairly regular basis. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a very good point around property management. I, rec I presume that you, you have uh, recommendations of, of yes, property managers yes. that you work with. Okay, brilliant. Um, so it's leading on from that. Um, you mentioned, you know, the tenants actually living in, in the in the properties. Um, if I was um, 
you know, renting out my property in Cyprus, what kind of lease durations could I actually offer? I know you mentioned short term, perhaps longer term. Is there a minimum maximum at all? Uh, for the long term, it has to be a yearly contract. Uh, only if you have a yearly contract, it's concerned long term. And then you go with, you have to deposit that rental contract to the tax offices and stuff. Uh, and then you have short term or holiday lets. That it can be, it can be for, for a week, a weekend, a month, a couple of months, you know, all that. It's, it's considered short term or holiday lets. Okay. All right. Brilliant. Um, and as we just go on that point as well, uh, is there any different, I'm just kind of backtracking a little bit uh, here, Helen, is there any um, different uh, financial implications from short-term lets to longer-term uh, longer lets that are over a year? Uh, if you put it for short-term holiday, holiday lets, you need a special license. Uh, you need to be registered in the Cyprus Tourist uh, Organization. Um, if you have a property management company, they take care of that. Um, the cost is, is very, very low. It's 222 euros. Don't ask me why it's 22 and not 20. I don't know. <laughs> and it's uh, for three years valid, actually. That uh, makes you, you have to, you know, put all your certificates in that, you know, you have like a um, insurance um, for, you know, fire and theft and liability, you know, for th third party, all that, um, that you have some, you know, smoke detectors and things like this. And uh, they give you a license with a, with a registration number. And that registration number will appear in all the rental platforms. As I said, anybody can do that themselves or through the lawyer. But if you are a, if you uh, have a property management company, they will do that for you. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, that's basic. You, there isn't anything else. Okay. All right. Great. No, that, I suppose that yeah, that covers everything. Um, Gary's actually asked uh, here. I know there's a few, uh, given the day and age since COVID, there's been a, a shift online for a lot of things such as this <laughs> but it's, in regards to the investors themselves do, would you offer perhaps you know remote viewings or viewings via yes. Uh, video? yes yes it's like actually this is one of good thing from COVID we all learned to zoom we all learned this communication mm. which is actually a very good one now many times you know our our uh, clients, uh, potential buyers, they have questions like this on, on rentals, on investments, on residencies. Instead of, uh, you know, exchanging lengthy, boring emails or just pick up the phone and talk, it's not good. We do this. We arrange first a Zoom call. We get to know each other. We communicate. And then um, we definitely do remote viewings through through this where normally like a, two of us um even before we even go to the comp to the to the property we drive through so you can see the area so you can see what's there so you can see what's close you can see the neighborhood you can see the outside building because sometimes they just view the inside of a property it looks fantastic fabulous and then you go the building is not nice or the area is not nice or very remotely so we can of course we do all that yeah and we had actually a lot of sales during COVID by doing this yeah, yeah i know you, you helped uh <laughs> some of my during that, that you know, <laughs> but i say it's, it's great that we can still have the the ability to you know yeah. communicate and see each yeah. other uh, as we do uh, it's one of the so the positive that have, have come out of COVID. If um, I, I know you mentioned there, you know, having uh, calls such as this, and everyone, every client's plans are unique, and it's important for you to get a good idea about what they're actually looking for. Let's say everything goes well, you find that the perfect property for mm -hmm. them remotely, without the client being, you know, over there in Cyprus. Would that client actually be able to purchase that property remotely, or would you yes. advise them to come across and have a look in person? I mean, what would the, the process be? It's like they can they can they can do the whole process remotely through the power of attorney that they would give to their lawyer. Uh, their lawyer would in would be in touch and inform them at any stage and, and us as well. Um, so 
if they don't want to, if they don't need to, if they're happy with the remote viewing, they don't have to come. And even if I have to say, even if um, we have, because we have the ready properties and we have the properties that they're not ready yet, that they're off plan or they're busy building, uh, on constructing, even in these cases where we're close to them, the lawyer will give them reports. We're going to give them reports. We're going to send them videos. We're going to send them photographs. We're going to send them progress, what we call progress reports. So they will know exactly what's going on at each stage, where their money go, because on the new builds and plots and builds, you don't pay all the money up front. You pay percentage according to the contract that you have. So everybody is, is informed. They, they don't have to come here if they don't want to. Okay, great. So yes, you'll be hold handing, handing, handing their, holding their hands sorry, throughout yeah. the whole throughout the whole process, uh, making sure, you know, they, they know what's happening, giving them updates, if it's a new builder on off-plan property, especially, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is so important, because if it was me, I'd like to know what would be going on, uh, you know, step by step. Um, one last point around that, let's say um, I was investing in a property, but would it be possible to invest in more than one property, or is it, would I only be allowed to invest in one? Is there a limit at all, Helen? If you buy it as an individual, you can buy up to two properties. Mm -hmm. If you're buying it through a company, because we have a lot of people, bigger investors, that they are making a company in Cyprus, and then they're buying the properties through that company, then you don't have the limit of the two properties. It's, it's different. Okay. All right, but I, yeah, I didn't know that. So yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, Gary, for the question and Helen for, for the answer. Um, we have another question here, Helen. Um, it's from Samer, who asks um, around the resale. You know, if they say they invested in the property and then resold it, is there going to be any government tax or other tax uh, that will be added on to that resale property that perhaps you, you know, we don't know about? If if they buy a property and then they sell it. Yeah, so they buy it as an investment, you know, to rent it out, and then they sold it you know, in a year's time or two years' time. Would there be any government tax attached to that sale? Uh, it's like the. Uh, it depends, and that's the accountant will will say to them because it depends uh, on how much they bought it. Okay, mm -hmm. they bought it at that amount, at that amount of money, and then they're selling it back at that amount. It depends on the market at that moment, how much profit they've done. So it's called capital gains tax. So that actually depends at the time. And only an accountant would say it can be up to 20 percent 20%. But it depends. It depends. It depends on how much profit they've done on selling the property, the, the property um, before they sell or when they when they will be ready to sell, um, they will uh, contact the account, their accountant, and he's going to advise them on how to do it and, and what to do. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Th thanks, Helen and um, Sammy for the, for the question. Um, so it would probably be very worthwhile to, to have a conversation uh, one on with Helen to, to kind of go through potentially you know, what you're, you're looking to do and, and how Cypress Emerald and the, and the team can help you, uh, you know, on your journey. Um, just a couple more questions, because we've been put a, a, some moments left, um, here, Helen, I suppose around the actual island itself. Um, obviously, there's different areas, uh, different areas for, for different people and kind of, you know, uh, whatever those, those people looking to, to invest in and, and live in. Um, at the moment, I mean, what are those, the areas which are very attractive towards investment? Is there anywhere areas where you perhaps wouldn't advise investing in in Cyprus? What does it look like it's, the island? Like all the as all the area, all all the areas of Cyprus, they're they're good for for an investment. Uh, it depends on the person's budget and on the person's special personal prefer, preferences. Okay, so if let's say you like Paphos. Uh, buying Paphos because eventually, you know, you will be, you buy for, to put it for rental, for holiday rentals, you will be coming or your family will be coming visit there. So you would like to be in an area that, that you like. And then maybe if you're considering of 
relocating or retiring in the area, you know, you would like to be in the area of, of your preference. Um, if I could say, if we could say at the moment that there is an area with uh, with a very big growth and that it can bring bring at the moment a very good um, like rental yield and, and as an investment, we would suggest Larnaca actually. Uh, Larnaca is going through now what Limassol was going like about 10 years ago. Um, a marina is being built, uh, very, very big projects, universities, big, big luxurious hotels. Uh, so at the moment, the best area to invest is Larnaca. To buy a property that, you know, that the um, value of that property is going to go up. And also if you, if you buy a property to rent, rentals are very high at the moment and go only higher. So that is all areas are good according to your personal, you know, choice and preference and your budget. But as a purely investment, if you look at something at the moment, we would say it's Larnaca. Great. All right. Thanks. And I say just on that note, um, just kind of going back a couple of steps and you said, you know, arranging those, um, you know, those one on one conversations or calls mm -hmm. with potential investors or property buyers. Um, to get an idea about you know what they're looking for, you know what kind of areas they're interested in, is so so important. So you know if our listeners here um, are thinking about uh, you know making the, the the jump or the the step over to Cyprus, please do um, you know speak to Helen and the, and the team at Cyprus Emerald. Go through those requirements. Um, you know lean on them as much as possible, as I know they they are very helpful and they have been uh, throughout the whole um, partnership with with us so um yeah so thanks a lot helen obviously for all of your your knowledge and your assistance so far and um, that's all we've kind of got time for this this afternoon um as mentioned what we'll do helen is we'll um we'll put your contact details at the end of this webinar to all the clients um, and pass over the details um we also will hold this session on demand um on our website so if there's any viewers here um, that have any family members, family friends, colleagues that perhaps you know would be interested in this, please do uh, point them in the direction of your overseas home website. And Helen, yeah, finally, obviously, thank you to you uh, so much as as always. You, you've been fantastic, um, covering off some some really good points and questions. <laughs> so thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And um, yeah, please do get in touch with with the rest of the, the clients as and when we pass them across. Um, but yeah, thanks, Helen. We'll, we'll leave you to the evening and we'll, we'll catch up soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all for watching. And please ask us any questions you have, ask us, and we're here for you. Okay. Thanks, Helen. Take care. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Ah,